these these certain unalienable rights that were endowed or endowed, endowed, however you say it, endowed to us by our Creator, is that we would have the right to uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And as I was looking at that, I thought to myself, wonder why they didn't say, because they didn't say the pursuit of life, they didn't say the pursuit of liberty, but they did say the pursuit of happiness. And as I was looking at that, it, it occurred to me that you cannot, you cannot guarantee happiness mm -hmm. to people. Right. Amen. That that no matter no 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 matter no matter how much you try, you cannot make somebody happy. In fact. You can't make yourself happy. You may have an idea of some things that you enjoy, uh, but but the, the, the real essence of happiness and satisfaction with your life, you can't do that yourself. Amen. And if you notice, even in our society with the with the uh, the advances that are made in technology and the advances in science and medicine and all that stuff. There seems to be more unhappy people than ever. Y'all ain't listening. Y'all y'all agree with that? Now, have, have you noticed that even with all the amenities of life, we don't have to stop at a phone booth now. Remember, you just have to stop at the phone booth, and then you have to figure out: Did you have a quarter? Yep. And then you get inside a dime. Or a right? dime, a dime. And then and then when you got in the phone booth, you didn't know if the thing worked or not. Mm -hmm. Right, because sometimes it was yanked out the thing and you couldn't, right? With all the amenities and all the techno technological breakthroughs, yet more than ever, people are isolated, mm -hmm. disgruntled. That's it. Yep. Got stuff happening and issues and can't get along. You understand? Here's, here's what's crazy. People, we, 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 we are in a society where we're living from week to week right. and dreading That's right. every week. Not me. Yeah. I don't dread every week. You ever heard Thank God it's Friday? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Thank God it's Friday. It means I'm sick of this week. I'm glad this week is over. Right? Why? So now I can go pursue some happiness. And I run around, I go to the club. I go to the bar, y'all don't want to say amen. I'm not. Right? I roll around with my with the with, with my posse, with my people, right? And we going at a breakneck speed trying to find this happiness. And then zilch. We worn out, we tired, and here comes Monday. <laughs> and we're dreading Monday. And as soon as we get through Monday, we're looking forward to Wednesday. Because Wednesday's hump day. <laughs> right? Can't wait to get up out of that job that we go to to get money so that we can continue our pursuit of happiness. And the crazy thing is, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And so we look around the room and we think, hmm, she can make me happy. <laughs> or we think, he can make me happy. And then we go through all the changes that it takes to hook them. <laughs> and then when we get them, you're miserable. This Negro! <laughs> I was doing bad by myself. <laughs> All of this because we're in the pursuit of happiness. We want to have a fulfilled life. And we forget one thing. God. The cycle continues because yep. we forget one thing. Mm -hmm. John 10.10, 10, this is what Jesus said. 
So, hey, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Say, but I am come, Lord have mercy, that they might have life and they might have it more. Abundant. Somebody say abundant, abundant. Abundant. Lee. Jesus said, I came to give you what you're trying to find. Amen. Amen. That's what he said. I came to give it to you. I came to give you that abundant life. I came. Now, this is, this is interesting to me. Because he did not say, I came to give you heaven. Because so many Christians those of us who have found Jesus, we've, we, we're still in that, that race to try to pursue happiness because we haven't really grasped it. We're going to talk about it, right? We really haven't grasped this, this, this satisfaction of our soul, even as Christians. And so what ends up happening is we're, we're, we, we've decided this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And I'm going to heaven. As soon as I get to heaven, that's when I'm going to be happy. Uh-huh. I'm going to be happy because <laughs> I don't have to think about all the cares of this life. And there's nothing wrong with that except you're missing a major piece. Mm-hmm. Because Jesus said, I came to give you life. I came to give you abundant life right here. Mm-hmm. Why should we have to wait to get to heaven that's right. I, I, I don't think we're going to need it when we get to heaven. Right. Amen. <laughs> Look at your name and say, he came to give it to you right here, right now, in this life. In this life. This, 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 this abundant, happy, overflowing. So I looked at that word abundant, that word abundantly. It means in great quantity, more than adequate, overflowing. Hallelujah. What does overflow mean? Overflow means to run over and beyond the brim, beyond the banks and beyond the borders. In other words, it's, there's no scarcity when you talk about overflow. We're talking about things that go pe- beyond what, 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 the, what the, con- the, the constraints are. And yes, Jesus did say, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to prepare a place for you. But can I tell you that it was in God's plan that we would live this abundant life right here, right now, in the Bronx, <laughs> at your address. <laughs> Come on, are you listening? Amen. It's not God's will for you to be miserable in life. That's right. And hope to hurry up and get to heaven to escape the misery of this life. Come on, church. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Is yes. there anybody in here sick and tired of being sick and tired? That, I guess that's what I want to know. Yep. Are you ready for an abundant life? Yes. Do you believe that God's will is for you to live just like you are? No. Or do you believe that God has some more? He has more. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on now. God, Come on. I'm thinking to myself, Jesus gave his life. He suffered and sacrificed. Right? He, 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 he did all that he did. Not just so we can sit here and be miserable Christians. Come on. Not so that we can that we can have the same, we can have the same reactions as those in the world. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? It is not God's will. Plus to live in scarcity and, and, and lack and, 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 and be miserable Christians. Oh, can I tell you what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid that we don't have a real revelation of who God is and what his role is in our life. Because for so many of us, God is there. He's Right? He's, he's there. So much so that we call him the man upstairs. <laughs> and it's like we can't climb the steps. 
He's there. But can I tell you that God's plan, because he loves us, he loves us so much that, 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 that we are his prized creation. Mm-hmm. That, that, that this humankind, this, this, this you, you, are the apple of his eye. Mm-hmm. You're, you're important to God. Are you listening to me? You. You're important to God. He cares. He cares about everything about you. Amen. And, and, and sometimes it sounds like words. Sometimes it, it doesn't seem to sink in. It, 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 it seems like you nod your head in agreement and you agree, but I, the, the revelation of it hasn't happened. Because if you ever catch the revelation of how important you are to God, Amen. you will change how you walk. Amen. Amen. You would look around and you would, you would think differently about yourself. You would think differently about your situation, your circumstance. You would know that no matter how it looks right now, God is taking me from glory to glory. That I'm not going to stay stuck in whatever situation that comes. That even though I have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not walking by myself. If I'm going in, it means I'm coming out. And you would not be bound by time. If you, if, you, if you ever had a real revelation of God, time wouldn't mean anything to you. You could be stuck in a situation so long that everybody around you thinks that's how it's always going to be. But when you that's have right. a revelation of God, you'll say, I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how long it's been looking bad. This God that I have a revelation of is going to pull me out. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm coming out of it. Say, you need a revelation. You need a revelation. You need a revelation. So you can understand God. See, sir. Because we'll grab hold of promises. We'll see promises in scripture. And we'll nod our heads. And we'll say, Amen. But until this thing is revealed to us, it seems like it goes in one end out of the other. It seems like the circumstances make us say, I'm going to show you yourself. Mm. In the scripture. Mm-hmm. Genesis chapter 12. Let's write it down. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> oh, I encourage you to read. Genesis chapter 12. Um, God shows up and has a conversation with Abram. Abram was a moon worshiper. He wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't looking for the true God. He was happy with his life. He wasn't broke. He, he, he had some dysfunction in his family. You know, we have, yeah, like most families, Abram was just like the rest of us. God comes and invades his face. God says to Abram, he says, hey, get up from where you are. Go to wherever I'm sending you. Doesn't tell him where you're going to send him. He says, go. And then he says, I'm going to bless you, Abram. So now, am am I going to bless you? But I'm going to bless those that bless you. And he said, those that curse you, I'm going to curse them. He says, Abram, I'm going to make you a blessing to many nations. And Abraham received it with joy. Ah, This God, who I wasn't seeking, has given me this promise. Hallelujah. Abraham was 75 or so years old. He was old already. When God crashed in on him. It was a promise, but he didn't have a revelation. Because he heard it, nodded his head, and in fact, he obeyed. The Bible says that he did what God told him. Packed up his stuff, got his family, and headed out. Lesson number one. Write this down. You have to obey. Whether you see it or not. Whether you understand it or not. You got to obey. When the things that you know God has instructed you to do. The things that you know is the will of God for your life. 
You must do it. You cannot expect to live abundant life and do whatever the heck you want to do. Okay. Say amen to that. Amen. I started to say something else. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Because so many Christians have the attitude that God is like a, 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 a sugar daddy. Right. That you can do whatever you want to do until you get into a situation. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to be able to pull his chain. That's right. And he's supposed to be able to respond to you. That's right. Are you listening to me? Yes. Come on, one more time. Look at that. You have to obey. You have to obey. Whether you understand it or not. Because there's going to be times that you're not going to understand why God is telling you to do what he's telling you to do. Sometimes it's not even going to make sense in your mind. Whether you understand it or not, obey. Tell them, whether you understand it or not, I'm, I'm driving this home. Whether you understand it or not, tell your neighbor, whether you understand it or not, you must obey. <laughs> Amen. So Abraham, Abraham obeyed. He did what God told him to do, and he headed on out. Three chapters later, Genesis chapter 15, God shows up again. Speaks to Abram. Abram says, I'm your shield. I got your back. You, you, you got great rewards with me. You're not going to lose out. He makes Abram some more promises. He says, come out here and look at the sky. Shows Abram the stars. He said, count them. Can't count them. He said, that's how great your, your, your descendants, your, your seed is going to be. Look at the sand. He said, hey, so God makes more promises. But still, Abram does not have a revelation of the God that he's dealing with. Okay. Ask me how I know. How do you know? Thank you for asking. <laughs> because in Genesis chapter 16, yes. because they didn't have a revelation of the God that was talking to him, Abram and Sarai decide God is taking too long. Right. Uh -huh. Clearly, he must expect us to do something else. Because he said he was going to bless us. He said our seed is going to be like the stars. And I'm barren. And you old. <laughs> <laughs> they take matters in their own hands. Push. Here's Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Y'all know Ishmael. Uh -huh. Ishmael was plan B. Ishmael was when, when, when people without revelation make decisions. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Write this down. Don't make life altering decisions without revelation. You can get so anxious and get so caught up and think you need to hurry up and do something and you haven't had a revelation of what God wants you to do and you'll make decisions that will alter your life forever. To this day, we're living with that decision. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's wars over in the Middle East, all because Abraham and Sarah felt like God was taking too long to try to figure out how to help God out. You gotta have a revelation. When you have a revelation of God, you can you, God can take as long as He wants. Amen. You don't get anxious. You don't get it. You don't get it up in the air. Mm -hmm. when, when you have a revelation of this God that you serve, That's right. Amen. It's, it's, you, 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 you just trust it. That's right. You know He's going to work it out. Yes. You got it. Mm -hmm. Look at your name and say it one more time. You need revelation. You need, you need revelation. revelation. Don't don't make decisions without it. Tell don't make, don't make decisions without revelation. Don't be doing no hit or miss. Don't be guessing. Come on, don't guess. Amen. Better to stop. Better to wait. And to know that you got God's green light. Say amen to that. Amen. So now Genesis chapter 17, after they made this wrong decision and all hell breaks loose and, and, and Hagar and, and, and Sarai have it out and there's a whole bunch of things. You all read all through that. God sees because he's aware of everything. The Bible says God comes back in chapter 17. This time, he reveals his nature, his character to Abram. 
He says, Abram, I am El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He says, walk before me and be perfect. Now that I'm showing you a glimpse of who I am, you can't walk any kind of way. I'm oh, sad a witness in here. Amen. When you come to a revelation of who God is, you cannot do whatever you want to do. Amen. You you have to you there has to be a, a, a desire, an intention, and an effort to walk before God in perfection. Hallelujah. Say amen to that. Amen. You can't have abundant life and live any kind of way. I know. Y'all don't want to hear that. I get it. But he says, I'm El Shaddai. That word El Shaddai means I am more than enough. He said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, Abraham, my name is abundant. Not only is my name abundance, not only is my name overflow, that's who I am. That I don't, I, I live and I operate outside of any boundary you can put me in. Because I'm El Shaddai. I'm the nurturer. I'm the one that has more than enough. Now this is interesting because in, in, in Genesis 17 verse 1, the Bible says Abraham was 99 years <coughs> old. 99, say 99. 99. 99 years old when God said, I'm El Shaddai. I believe that God deliberately waited. I believe it. I believe he took his time and waited until in the natural, all the boundaries were set. That in the natural, it looked impossible. Amen. Amen. And I believe that's when God said, now I'm going to reveal to you that I operate outside of your human conditions. Even the conditions I created. That's what I love about a sovereign God. He can set a rule and he can change his rule. Say amen to that. Amen. That, that mean, in other words, he, he, you can have a, a harvest on schedule. And God can change the harvest. Did you hear me? Yeah. That there can be something that's coming your way. But God can change it. Because he's the Lord of the harvest. I stand here in front of you right now telling you that there's some seeds that I have sown. That if God hadn't changed the harvest, I would not be here right now. God's calling. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 There's some things that I have done that I deserve not to be here. Amen. And he said, you're going to reap what you sow. But yet he's the Lord of the harvest. And there are times that he'll stick his finger in the middle of the process and cause you not to get what you deserve. Do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody in here that can testify that you did not get everything you deserve? That's why when you come into the house of God, you are coming with your hands lifted up. When you come here acting all cute, you better say, God, I thank you. And I should I should have lost my mind. I thank you. I should have, I should have been. I should have been. God said, I operate outside of the boundaries. I am El Shaddai. Hallelujah. More than enough. God said to, to declare to you today. That that's what he wants to reveal to us in this year. He wants to reveal to us that he is El Shaddai. I don't care how things look in the natural. I don't care what boundaries are set up. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the judge said. I don't care what the landlord said. I don't care what the... Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We serve El Shaddai. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. <laughs> His name means overflow. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. His name means overflow. His name means set up the, the river bank. But let me keep pouring myself into it. It's going to come out over the river bank. Glory to God. Woo! I, 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 can, I, can I tell y'all something? I'm excited about what this year is going to be. I, I, I can't even get it out. I'm, I, I'm so excited about what God is going to do. As we step into his purpose, step into his plan, and watch him reveal himself. 
to everybody who's grabbing a hold of it by faith. Mm-hmm. My question is, will you grab it? Look at your name to ask him, will you grab it? Will you grab it? you grab it by faith? Yes, sir. Grab that faith. Come on. I'm Hallelujah. I'm ready to go to another level. Yep, so am I. Ah, come. Yep. And let me just say this. When we talk about overflow, sometimes people get dollars and cents in their mind. Everybody's thinking, everybody's thinking, oh, oh Pastor Tim saying that we, 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 we're going to all be multi-millionaires. <laughs> hey, this is what I am saying. What I am saying is you're going to live an abundant life. Amen. Amen. That means, that means you're going to have more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, now does that include finances? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I don't believe God wants us running around broke, busted, and disgusted. Yes. I don't care. I don't care. Now, there's going to be seasons when it's going to feel like that. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. But it's, Amen. It, he allows those seasons so that you can, you can learn how to stretch out on that. Because we're so easily, uh, we, 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 we very quickly forget where our source is. Yep. Yep. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. We, 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 we get all happy and, and we get all, uh-huh. all, and we start to act like we take credit for right. what's happening in our life. Exactly. Amen, y'all. Yep. Amen. And, and, and so sometimes he has to allow us to hit a dry spell. Yep. Oh, right? He has, to, he has to do something to, to put us on our knees. To remind us you ain't nothing without me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's Paul said, I can do all things. Hey, glory to God. I feel like keeping him in that. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But I recognize that if I don't have Christ. Come on, tell, 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 tell somebody you need him. You need him. You need him. You need El Shaddai. We need a revelation of El Shaddai. We need to know this God who is more than enough. He desires that we would live in abundance. That's why he sent Jesus. And that's why Jesus said what he said is all tied together. Jesus came to tell us that, that, we, that, that we have been pursuing. He says that you can find it in me. He said the enemy comes to steal. Kill. Destroy. I come. Give you life. Life more abundant. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. So over these next few weeks, next few conversations we're going to have, we're going to talk exactly about what it takes. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be sorely disappointed. I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to be disappointed because you want a magic wand. Mm-hmm. You want you want to twitch your nose mm-hmm. and everything's great. But Jesus gives us a very definite key on what it takes to live an abundant life. Anybody want to live an abundant life? Yes. Amen. Bow your mm-hmm. head for me. Lord, I thank you that you are El Shaddai. That you are the God who's more than enough. I thank you that you love us. That you, you, you do. You love us. Light of us. In case I have to move back up. And we're human, God. We. You know us, that you made us. We're forgetful. We're oftentimes arrogant. Oftentimes we complain. We find fault. You know we backbite too. We're just, we're just flesh. But for some reason, you, you, you love us. Some reason. So the best we can do is say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that even, even though Abram and Sarah I messed up with contrary to your plan, I thank you that that did not change your plan. 
And so, Lord, right now, we, we, we thank you. We thank you. But even though we've messed up and gone contrary to your plan, your plan for our lives remains intact. And so we thank you for that. Come on, somebody tell them thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you that, that, that even though you did your own thing, it was your own way, you know, maneuvered your own however you chose, it didn't cause him to change his mind. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. I think we ought to take a minute and thank him that his plan for us was done before we messed up. Therefore, the mess up doesn't alter the plan. Thank you, God. Come on, somebody tell him thank you. Thank you. And Lord, I thank you that even, even the mess ups that we'll do in the future, because I already know that in 2018, we're going to miss it somewhere. In 2018, we're not going to get it all right. But you know all about it. And you love us anyway. And your plan remains intact for us. And so we say thank you. Somebody tell them thank you. Thank you. So Lord, I thank you for your promise that we would live in this overflow. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you declared over us that you came to give us life and life more abundantly. So I declare it over everybody under the sound of my voice, those that are streaming live. Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus that this year is a year of living in the overflow. That we will have more will be all sufficient. Everything that we need will be supplied in abundance. That we will be blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. And everything that the enemy has meant for harm, God, you are turning it for good. I declare it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I declare according to your word that no matter what we face, no matter what comes our way, we can stand fast in the liberty where you have set us free and we will not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. We'll not be entangled in the yoke of bondage of death. We'll not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage of sickness and disease, but we will be free to be what you call us to be. I declare it in the name of Jesus. No, I declare it in the name of Jesus. Those who grab it by faith, because without faith it's impossible to please you. So I thank you for those who are grabbing it right now by faith. In Jesus' name. I want you to take a minute and just prophesy to your neighbor. Tell him about your own life. Tell him this year I'm living in the overflow. That's it. Tell him. Tell them, even be specific about areas. I'm living overflow in my relationship. I'm going to be living overflow in my finances, even in my health. Come on, declare it. Speak it. Speak it. Say it. Say it. Say it. I declare favor over my life. I declare favor over my family. I declare wisdom. I declare insight. Hallelujah. Come on. Say it. Say it. Say it.
and you look much better than you do right now. I declare in the name of Jesus. I can see you in your future, and you look much better than you do right now. You believe it? Yes. You believe it? Yes. Can you see better for yourself? Yes. Then look at your neighbor and tell them and say, I see me in my feet. Yes. Yeah. Child, you don't know how good I look. Tell them, come on. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. My life is off the chain. Woo! Glory to God. Hey, let, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. You, you. you have you have got to be you have got to be steadfast in your confidence in God. Are you listening? Can y'all hear me? You cannot allow the passage of time or the unchanging situation to cause you to make decisions outside of the plan of God. Are you listening to me? And when you when, when, when you grab hold of this, right, the, the enemy is going, I, I promise you, he's going to make you think that God is doing something at somebody else's house and forgot about you. When you leave here, you're going to go back to some of the same situation, right? It's going to be looking the same, right? And in fact, for some of you, you 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 leave out of here and the news could be worse. You're expecting to hear something that could be worse. What what do you do? That's when you dig your heels in. That's when you say, I'm standing with you, God. Right? I'm standing on your word. Because you're faithful. And even though this is what I see, because you're El Shaddai, you're outside of what I see. Holy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all listening to me? You believe God? Yes. I mean, do you really believe God? Yes. Do you believe Him enough to put feet to your faith? Because sometimes we believe God, but we don't do nothing. Amen. But the Bible says faith without works is dead. You gotta, you gotta show your faith by what you do. Amen. Say amen to that. So y'all know we're on a 40-day fast. Three of y'all. This is the last week. How many of y'all hanging in there? Hanging, hanging. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Woo! I know it gets this. We're going to have testimony. I'm going to give you mine. I'm going to give you mine. Listen. A couple years ago, I went to the doctor for a checkup. Doctor said, your blood pressure is high. I said, yes, because I'm here with you. <laughs> I'm like, I don't make stuff up. Right? I'm like, uh. And they said, well, you have to take a pill. So I negotiated with the doctor. I said, I'll tell you what. I'll agree to take half of the pill. All right? And so the doctor said, all right, you take half of the pill. You come back in, I don't know, six months or whatever. Went back. Doctor, no, your blood pressure is high. And the doctor said, have you been checking every day? They gave me one of them things. And I said, no, I haven't been checking. And so I said, but I feel great. They said, well, because you haven't been checking, your blood pressure is high, you got to take the whole pill. And that's when I decided I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do it. Right? Because I believe in the God who heals. I have I have a revelation of a healing God. Right? That's right. right. Yep. It's not, it's not just theory to me. Uh -huh. not, I've seen God work to me. I've seen yes. God heal people for real, for real. Are you listening to me? Yes. And sometimes we have to practice what we preach. That's yeah. right. Sometimes the stuff we preach, we have to manifest ourselves. That's right. I said to myself, there's no way in the world that I'm going to go to my grave taking a pill in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now don't get mad if you're taking pills. Everybody's faith is at different places. Amen? Amen. I, but I encourage you. Mm -hmm. And so, 
Back in back in November, right before Thanksgiving, I ran out of these pills. And I was taking it every day. Right? But I had made up my mind it's not what I want to be doing. And so I knew that I needed to change some things. I needed to lose weight. Say lose weight. Lose weight. Look at your neighbor and say lose weight. <laughs> uh, I need I need to let some stuff go. <laughs> Oh, Lord. All right? We ain't calling names now. <laughs> and so I didn't call the doctor to renew the subscription. So from November until the other day, I have not been taking them. Because I didn't have it. But if you all remember, when we announced the facts, I told you there were two outcomes that I was believing God for. Y'all remember? I said one was on the physical side, that I was believing God for healing, that as, as we fasted, that, that there would be cleansing and things would happen. Y'all remember me talking about that? Right? I showed it to you in Daniel, right? And then on the spiritual side. So I, I have been on the fast. And I have had opportunities to cheat, like y'all. The difference between me and y'all, I didn't. Some of y'all did. Some of y'all, I'm just saying. I get a notice from my doctor. Time to come in for a checkup. And I decided, am I going to go or am I not going to go? So I went. I went. The first thing they do, check your body. Doctor looked at me, called in the team people. I said, oh, look at that. Blood pressure is normal. Yeah. Hey, hey, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. All right? I said, get on the scale. Got on the scale. I went from 240 to 218. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> Yo, listen, this is what I'm saying, right? What, 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 I, I, I mean, and to God be the glory, right? To God be the glory. Amen. What I'm saying to you is it's not enough to believe God if you don't have corresponding actions to demonstrate your belief. Are you listening to me? Yes. Amen. God has great things in store for us. But there's some things that we're going to have to do. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Living the abundant life doesn't mean you sit on the couch and expect something to happen. Say amen. 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 Perhaps you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You know, that is the most important decision you'll ever make. You must have a day. You must have a moment in time when you, as an act of your will, made the decision to accept and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus came to him and said, hey, Lord, I, I, I want to I wanna inherit uh, eternal life. I want to I go to heaven. I want to I want to make sure that, that, that I'm a part of your kingdom. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, hey, you must be born again. Not church attendance, not having family that goes to church, not being related to a pastor or a preacher or a musician or whatever. He said, you must be born again. So if you're here today, you say, Pastor Jim, I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember if I ever had a moment in time when I said yes to the Lord. If you're here today and you, you're not sure about where you'll go, where you'll spend eternity, where, where it's all over here on earth, I want to invite you to come to this altar right now. Your life can change today. Jesus stands at the door and knocks and he says, if you'll open your heart, I'll come in and I'll live with you. 
Are you here today? You want to be sure? You want to walk out of this door confident, knowing that the Lord is your King, that that you're a child of God, and that heaven belongs to you? I invite you to come to this altar right now. Is there one? You take from them because they're in my way. I need, I need the church to be praying. I need y'all to pray. Pray just for a moment in case there's somebody. Let's, let's minimize the talking and moving, please. Somebody's eternity is weighing in the balance. If, there's, if you're here today and you have not ever made the decision to be born again, to be a child of God, I, 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 I plead with you. Let today be that day. Is there one? Thank you, Jesus. Perhaps you're here today and you say, well, Pastor Tim, I'm a Christian. I do know that. But maybe you're not living where you're supposed to live. Maybe you have backslidden. Maybe the fire has gone out. You're not walking in the place that you should be walking. And if you're here today and you know that you're not connected to God, you know that that, that, that you're, 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 you, you slid back. I know what that's like. I want to invite you to come to the altar right now. That's you. Be reconnected. Get yourself back in place with God. Amen. Is there one? So I want you to ask the person sitting next to you. Doesn't matter who they are. Ask them. Do you, do you need to go down to that altar? Ask them. Say, I'll walk with you. Come on. If you need to go, I'll walk with you. But sometimes people just need to be encouraged. Go on. Sit down. I'll go with you. It could, this could be the most important decision you'll ever make. I'm telling you, your life will be transformed. Doesn't mean things are going to be easy, but you won't be by yourself. You'll have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords living with you. If there's one, we'll wait just for a moment. Pray just for a minute longer.